I'd like to provide the update for this week for Lucas County. We're approaching week five of phase 1B vaccine distribution. I'm happy to say about 42,000 of us have been vaccinated or about 9.82% of Lucas County population. Starting this Monday, February 15th, individuals with severe congenital developmental or early onset disorder, as outlined on the graphic here, will be eligible to receive their COVID vaccine. Scheduling is now available for these appointments. Please note, those with these specific conditions will be required to attest to their qualifying condition when scheduling online, and further screening is gonna be done at their appointment. It's important to note that those over 65 are still eligible and it please encouraged to schedule their vaccine appointment as we continue through the remaining weeks in phase 1B. As supply increases, COVID-19 vaccine appointments will continue to become available, ensuring all those in phase 1B are eligible to get vaccine if they so choose. We've had a lot of questions and concerns about not getting an appointment. Why is that? Um, let, let's talk about that for a second. I, I think it's important. Vaccine is scarce. We've talked about this now. The governor's talked about this. The federal government has talked about the limited supply. I think this graphic really does tell the tale of what's going on in Lucas County. This is just for phase 1B in the shaded area, 145,000 population. The blue bars are the, uh, the amount of vaccine that we've been able to receive over the weeks. And that green line is really looking at those individuals who've been vaccinated. So as you're trying to make an appointment, please note that there are, there's a lot of individuals who are in this group that want to get vaccine, but the vaccine just is not there yet. I, I want to, though, make sure that the community understands. The health department, our partners, the emergency operations center, our local government officials are in this for the long haul. We are going to make sure that we get the vaccine in and we get it out quickly through this entire process until the end until the end of COVID, which again, we really need to make sure that we understand with the vaccine, with all the things that we're doing with masking and keep our hands washed and, 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 and not going to social gatherings. This is helping us again, knock down COVID. So the end is, is in sight. It's just a little bit more, it's just a little, little longer off than I think we all want it to be, but we need to be patient. So again, Lucas County had about 140, has about 145,000 individuals that want to get the vaccine or are eligible. This week, we got about 10,000 vaccines appointments that, that were available. Uh, 8,000 of those, however, were for uh, school personnel teachers. So that really only left us about, about 2,000 open appointments. So again, goes back and stressing why it, it is difficult to get an appointment right now. Again, um, I, I think every time that I, I see a picture of this, this, this gets, I think this gets us all excited. It gets me excited. It, it makes me very proud of our community. Lucas County uh, school leaders, some of them came together at a news conference, emphasizing the importance of the COVID-19 vaccine and getting students back into the classroom. Uh, additionally, several of these leaders received their first dose of vaccine during this time. So again, uh, we, we need to understand that this is truly, truly an important step, getting, our, kid, getting our, our, our school teachers and staff vaccinated. So this weekend, we're looking at um, vaccinating uh, about 8,000 individuals that were scheduled to receive their COVID vaccine at the UT clinic. Again, this is only successful because of the partnerships that we have, not just with the schools, but it's really, it's really important to understand at least this, uh, this, this endeavor is made possible by the partnership of, of Mercy Health, especially the University of Toledo, and of course the health department coming together and, and, and making this heavy lift actually work. I do want to caution school personnel, please, um, as you've been told, but we want to make sure that, again, this is said, work directly with their schools to schedule their appointment. Please do not uh, attempt to make the appointment on the department's website. Uh, that, that is not going to work. Uh, so with that said, um, again, looking forward to this weekend and getting, these, uh, get, getting the teachers and staff vaccinated so they can be, uh, be assured that they have safety um, and security when they go back into the classroom uh, with our students. Some new information uh, for our county. All, all veterans are eligible to schedule a vaccine appointment through the Veterans Administration, regardless of current services received. 
If a veteran is currently receiving services, they may be asked to supply their DD-214, again, discharge papers. Please call 419-252-2000. Again, 419-259-2000. I want to turn our, our attention into uh, something that is extremely important to, uh, again, myself, the, the, the health department, many in the community, the governor, and that really truly is ensuring equitable access to COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, it, it is truly a priority for all of us that are, uh, that are working in, in, in the, the rollout of the vaccine. To meet the goal today, we are announcing several initiatives to guarantee doses for those who are in need and in those underserved communities. So this week, the Health Department Area Office on Aging have collaborated with the National Guard's Regional Rapid Response Assistance Program, which provides COVID-19 vaccine to older adults in low income housing. Also, pilot program with ProMedica, thank you very much for that partnership, and the health department are collaborating with the faith-based community to provide doses to minority and underserved populations. Again, that pilot program, uh, we're, we're expecting to, again, carry that on in the coming weeks. Aiming to vaccinate all members of Latino and uh, Black communities against COVID-19, um, the Farm Labor Organizing Committee has hosted several clinics in, our, in the community. So uh, again, um, we, we, we need multiple avenues to make sure that we're reaching into those underserved populations and more to come on other avenues that we're exploring to make sure, again, the underserved population, is, the, the vaccine is, is equal to them. I want to make sure that we're clear on this. If you pre-registered with the health department for the vaccine, you should be receiving a weekly email um, and also notification of when you are eligible to, to schedule an appointment for a COVID vaccine. Please, a vaccine appointment still must be scheduled. This was just pre-registration. So again, you still will need to schedule an appointment for your vaccine when it is your time to, uh, to actually receive that vaccine. I want to talk about a new CDC report which with highlights how improving the, the fit of your mask can help slow the spread of COVID-19. Here's the bottom line. You should wear your mask that fits tightly to your face. Uh, I, again, we're looking at two masks as well too, uh, which could improve the, uh, the ability to protect yourself against COVID-19. Uh, we'll be talking about that more to come, but ag again, uh, we're, we're looking at new research that's coming out that should uh, further protect us from COVID-19. No matter what, you should continue to wear your mask and practice social distancing even after being vaccinated. While the vaccine should protect you from becoming sick with COVID-19, again, not enough is known about whether or not you can still carry the virus, spread it to others. At this time, those who get the vaccine should still continue to wear a mask and practice social distancing. Another good news story. CDC released a report late yesterday regarding the need to quarantine for COVID exposure after you've been vaccinated. Here's the bottom line. If you've been vaccinated, fully vaccinated, which means 14 days after your second dose, and you're within three months of that vaccine, and you've, been, and you've had no symptoms after being exposed to somebody with COVID-19, you're not going to have to quarantine. More to come uh, on this subject definitely next week. But again, we're hearing good news. I think the community needs to understand that, that we're seeing great things happen on the COVID front to get us back to a normal life. I want to, uh, again, turn our attention to, uh, again, another uh, avenue to get information. The health department and our great friends with the V Project uh, have created, uh, again, sh some short videos discussing COVID myths. We launched the first one last week. And uh, again, I'd just like to take a couple minutes out here. Let's play this week's video. And, and again, um, I, I think they're really, really good. Hi, I'm Tom Cole here, and welcome into Vaccine Mythbusters, Episode 2. And it's certainly an honor and a privilege for me to welcome in a very, very good friend of mine, Rhonda Sewell. Superstar, how are you? Hey, Tom. I'm really glad to be here with you for Episode 2. You know, Tom, I was thinking social media can be such a fun place especially when it's your birthday. Everyone wishes you happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> I even keep in touch with some of my elementary school friends on social media, but it really can have a downside. Social media, it can allow inaccurate information to be spread on a wide range of topics. You know, facts are extremely important, as you know, to all of us in our lives so that we can make good decisions, especially 
when we're talking about taking a life-saving vaccine. Tom, you're spot on. Our natural immunity to virus only lasts a limited amount of time. So experts tell us that receiving the vaccine when you are eligible boosts your immunity. So what we know so far, Tom, is that the vaccine extends the time you are protected. But I've got a question for you. Uh, if you currently have COVID, when is it appropriate for you to get the vaccine? Well, I just talked to all of our experts over at the health department, and they're telling us, Tom, that you can get the vaccine as soon as your isolation or quarantine time is up which is usually 10 to 14 days. Rhonda, that's great news. You know, I very much look forward to my family and I being vaccinated. And you know, who knows, Rhonda, maybe this summer I'll, I'll see you out at a concert or at a mud end game or at Paco's uh, getting a hot dog. Well, heck, as a matter of fact, you had to go into Paco's and sign uh, one of those hot dog buns as a superstar. If it's a vegan dog, I'll do it, okay? Promise. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm with you, Tom. I really look forward to vaccine myth busting, I call it, with you over the next few weeks. So if you can please, if you're watching, head on over to the V Project or the Toledo Lucas County Health Department's Facebook pages, give them a like, keep up to date, and get official information on the COVID vaccine. Uh, we'll see you next week and stay safe. And please stay informed. Again, a uh, little, you know, they're short, but they're packed full of information. And, and again, they're busting those myths that are out there. So uh, again, really appreciate those being done. Another avenue to get the message out and to get more uh, information and understanding about COVID-19 and, and the vaccine. On Tuesday, February 16th at 7 p.m., Tune in to uh, get our partners with the V Project or the Health Department's Facebook page to watch an interfaith summit. Faith leaders from all across the county, as well as a panel of experts, will present information on COVID-19 vaccine. The event will be replayed on WGTE on February 19th at 1 p.m. and again on February 20th, uh, excuse me, on February 25th at 8 p.m. I think with that said, uh, my updates for this week have concluded. Uh, can we go ahead and open up for questions? If anyone has any questions, you can go ahead and raise your hand. Melissa, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Good morning, Eric. Um, checking with you more specifically on the programs that you say are being launched to serve um, underserved populations. And is yeah. that specifically people 65 and older? Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Go down that road a little bit. Yeah, any, any of these programs still have to follow the eligibility guidelines for uh, for vaccine for vaccinations and again as they change they become more open those same programs will again be able to vaccinate those individuals amy you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question good morning eric um so we're talking about the shortage of the vaccine uh, and how you know it's not really necessarily a scheduling problem more so a supply problem um can you go into detail on how many doses, I guess, on average, you guys get per week for the health department? And I don't know if you can shed some light on how that compares to other counties. So let's talk about equity of vaccines. Uh, they are distributed equally amongst the counties. Now, I caution us, remember, we're working with the K through 12 teachers and staff right now. So that, that puts a little variable into amount of vaccine that each county is gonna be able to get at one point in time, because again, it is limited. So you got to take from one pot to get to another pot. Okay, so with with that in mind, then too, um, we're hearing that there there could be some increase over the next couple of weeks. I think we heard the governor say this too of a percentage of uh, a vaccine uh, per county. So uh, again, everybody is getting a uh, a, a proportion of population uh, vaccination vaccines coming into their into their county. Uh, again, I think you're 100 right. It really so much isn't a scheduling concern. Because again, if we could increase the amount of vaccine, we could increase the number of schedules. But again, it's just, we're just not there yet. So again, I, I don't wanna give a hard and fast amount of doses that we're gonna get in the community because again, it's changed so many times. Uh, but I think the important thing is that everybody across the state is getting their, their allotment that they're allowed to have at this point in time. 
Can you give like a range of what you guys have gotten over the past couple of weeks? So, you know, we've gotten a range from, you know, 2000 uh, that we can actually give to, um, to the one, let's say the 1B community. Um, we've, we've gotten a range from, you know, three, 4,000 up to 10,000, but don't forget then too, we're looking at that for the K through 12. So there, there's multiple ranges there. Okay, and then kind of a follow-up question to that. Um, we've been told, you know, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is kind of on the cusp of potentially, you know, being approved at the end of this month. How will that help uh, increase supply here? So um, depending on the, the amount of doses that are released by Johnson & Johnson, that is going to help. Uh, you know, again, more doses, th th this, this makes sense, more doses that are put out by Johnson & Johnson, the more doses that we can get on, into arms, the more doses that are, are released by, uh, for the Moderna and Pfizer, uh, the more doses we can get in, uh, into arms. So it all depends on what they're anticipating that their release will be. I imagine it's gonna be somewhat slow at the start, but it should sp speed up. Again, some, some numbers we're hearing, uh, Johnson & Johnson, maybe 100 million doses, uh, over the next several months. Uh, you might've heard too, Moderna and Pfizer uh, closer to the summertime are gonna release uh, 100 mil million doses as well. Again, these are just numbers right now, but that's kind of, we're, we're, we're putting some stock into that anticipation of those, those doses being released. Sophia, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Hi, um, so going off of the double masking, I know there's a lot of talk on social media where people are saying, well, now we're going to be forced to double mask. Um, can you kind of just talk about how, and correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like that double masking is showing to be very effective, maybe more effective than wearing one mask, but one mask still protects you. Uh, again, I, I wanna make sure that we, we understand where we're going, okay? we start off with the one mask all right and, and that there's been some research on that and now we we went into this the, the double mask issue i think the bottom line is that any gaps that you have whether it's one or two masks uh really decrease the ability to protect yourself from getting covid or giving it to covid to somebody else because again those gaps are what causes that air to be expelled and, and get into into a room let's say so the the, the snugger you can make uh, that fit the better off we are now we're talking about you know extra filtration by having two masks or, you know, some sort of filter on a single mask, it, it makes sense. It, it's going to, again, decrease the ability for particulates of COVID to come out of your mouth and into the air and vice versa, being able to actually inhale those. Um, again, th this is research that's out there. They're, they're talking about a surgical mask uh, with, a, with a, another mask over it. Uh, but again, that surgical mask fits tightly. And then that cloth mask does the same thing. Uh, there's also some um, some consideration of just double masking, uh, but again, you know, the, the bottom line is one: we got to wear our single mask appropriately, um, and then two: yeah, um, if we're we're looking at protecting ourselves further, the two masks worn the white ray even you know even protect us further. You know, I, again, um, you know, we we try to wear the mask the right way. Remember that the mask has got to cover your nose and your mouth. All right. And again, the, the, the snugger you can make it, the better off you are. Caitlin, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, Eric. So hey. I talked to Wood County and they are setting aside a certain allotment of appointments for callers only, understanding that some people don't have computers to register for the vaccine online. Is that something that Lucas is doing? Yeah, uh, we started that uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually. Um, and again, it really truly are for those individuals that are having an issue with, you know, getting on the computer. Uh, again, we talked about this on a press conference several weeks ago about using your office on aging and 211, uh, how we're supposed to use use that appropriately. Uh, again, we, we've, we've set aside, um, if you would, a certain amount of, of, uh, of scheduled appointments to be able to do that. Again, it's it, this is all about partnerships. Uh, two on one, Arabs on aging. You know, we're we're trying to work hand in hand to figure out how to help these true these individuals who truly are having barriers to get to get um, to get scheduled appointments. Uh, it's not just because you know um, I just don't want to get on the link. It, it, it truly is for those individuals that that really need that that assistance. This will be the last question. Melissa, if you want to unmute yourself and ask your question. 
Yeah. Um, what about our seniors who don't live in like low income senior housing, but live in regular senior housing? Are we going to address that at all? And then I have a follow up. Uh, I, again, uh, I, I think you're hearing directives from the governor about a, a number of uh, underserved populations, but then also, you know, the, the, the elderly population and again, trying to get some programs out to uh, some of these uh, senior centers, uh, maybe the, uh, uh, the residence areas. So again, more to come on that. Uh, again, we're, we're, we're dealing with that limited supply and trying to figure out how to, again, take that limited supply and move that out into multiple avenues. Uh, again, to try to canvas as, as much of those different communities and populations as possible. Okay, and the follow-up I have um, is, so we know that this week's vaccine allotment has had to be split just so that we take care of our teachers on Saturday, Friday, Saturday. Do we have another shipment coming in next week that's gonna open up more appointments for 1B? And if so, how many are we anticipating as far as doses? Sure, that, that's a great question. Yeah, we're gonna have several thousand doses uh, next week, if you would, uh, for 1B. Uh, we're also concerned about uh, so that kind of some of those individuals in that 1A category, that tier group. So we're, we're trying to make sure that we get vaccines out to them as well too. Uh, but again, we're, we're, we'll, see it, we'll see an increase of several thousand in the community, uh, additional doses than we had last week. So that, that is good. Uh, but again, um, you know, it is a limited supply that we have out there. So uh, again, keep on trying to get that appointment. But uh, uh, again, the community needs to understand we're going to continue this 1B category for several weeks. So uh, again, I, I know people are probably very stressed about trying to get an appointment, but continue to do that. And eventually we're going to be able to get those who want to be vaccinated, vaccinated. Okay, thank you. Sure. We have another question. Um, Caitlin, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Thanks. So I'm wondering if we can say yet whether the vaccine is making a difference in our community and driving down cases now that we've had 42,000 people vaccinated. And are we starting to see some cases among populations that are being vaccinated, like healthcare workers and nursing home residents? Are we starting to see some of them drop off? Uh, again, I, I think we're seeing a little bit of mixture here because I'm still hearing some cases in long-term care facilities, but there's nothing like they were months ago. Uh, I think it's still too early to say, you know, is the vaccine truly helping? But I, I would caution us in the statement that I did before about the quarantine issue. You, let's link a couple things here. If, if we're saying that you don't have to quarantine, if you're vaccinated within three months and then you don't have any symptoms, but you've been exposed, that's indicative of, uh, of where we're going with the vaccine and the protections inside the community. So anecdotally, I would suggest that, yeah, it's having some influence on the cases, but again, it goes back to the multiple layers of protection we have to have. The vaccines are very important right now, especially with new variants that we could be experiencing in the future. Masking, hand washing, still social distancing are all, are, are all effective measures to make sure that we, again, we drop down the COVID cases and, and again, we can be better protected in the community. It doesn't look like there are any more questions. Great. Well, I thank you uh, all for, uh, again, from the media. You're so important to this endeavor that we're trying to, uh, again, do with COVID vaccines and the information about vaccines. So again, I really appreciate um, all the help you've been giving us to get the message out. Have a good day.